GM, GM, just a quick one before we get going. So as you know, the Blockmates podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Certainly shouldn't be considered as financial advice. We have absolutely no idea what we're talking about half the time. So any investment decision you do make should be based on your own research and your own understanding of the risks involved. One more thing as well, there's around 50% of people who listen regularly who aren't subscribed yet. So if you please could just do us a favor and hit the subscribe or the follow button or the like button. Helps content grow, helps us grow, helps it reach more people like yourselves um, and it means the world to us as well. So that's the last I'll uh, ask of you. So yeah, let's get to the episode. GM and welcome back to the channel. You're with me, Gareth here, aka CryptoTube across socials for a Maya DAO explainer, as this one has a very bright future here and some major catalysts just on the horizon. So in this one, I'm gonna break down the TLDR on Maya and its ecosystem of protocols and let you know what to expect for this V2 upgrade as this moves from its home base currently on Metis, a little bit siloed, over to Arbitrum. If you enjoy this one, make sure you do smash a like on the video, drop a comment down below as well, and subscribe to the channel, and we can jump on in. So starting off here, we have Maya, the token. So this is the DAO governance token, Maya DAO, and this was actually utilized to bootstrap the whole of this ecosystem. So they had a bonding mechanism in place. Investors would trade their USDC in to receive discounted Maya. This fair launch allowed them to buy up a basket of blue chip assets that generate revenue and that back this protocol. So with the V2 upgrades here, Maya is gonna go through a bit of a big change, integrating with layer zero for Omnichain under a protocol name that they call Ulysses. And they will also bring about the advent of a new liquidity optimization and management platform called Talos. So more on all of these in today's video. Sit back, relax. This is a juicy one. Here we are. This is Hermes. So this is the AMM, the DEX. And this is where you can trade volatile assets, i.e. non-pegged assets, and also stable assets like stable coins as well. Think of it as Curve meets Uniswap. And what you can see from the architecture across the top here with all these different functions, if you've been involved in any solidly forks, you will recognize a lot of these here. Yes, this is a solidly fork, VE33, and therefore takes advantage of the solidly gauges to incentivize LP. Solidly forks like Hermes allow you to distribute emissions without dilution. So those who lock their Hermes tokens for VE Hermes actually increase their holdings proportional to the weekly emissions. So as you can see, the AMM in itself has its own incentivization token, Hermes, and users are incentivized to, of course, lock it under the locker here to gain a max boost. But before we go through the flow of things on here, just think about LPs. They're very important in any DEX. So within this DEX, the LPs receive the Hermes emissions and the gauges, which you can see up here, these actually measure the activity and proportionally distribute rewards to them. So Hermes is therefore the incentive mechanism for the LPs. Those that lock their Hermes for VE Hermes, these holders will get the fees generated on the pools that they vote for. So the uses of the Hermes token, voting, staking, and boosting. And you need to lock for VE Hermes in order to achieve these things. So if you want to maximize rewards, you must max lock VE Hermes for the maximum duration. And for the LPs to maximize their emissions that they receive in the Hermes token, they also need to lock the VE Hermes token too. So this means both participants here are aligned in max boosting. So what this ecosystem allows for is the renting of liquidity via the following user flow. So a DAO wants deep liquidity for its token. What it will do is actually add bribes. So they will come to a gauge and add bribes. These are typically in the form of their own governance tokens so that the VE Hermes lockers will come and vote on said gauge. By VE Hermes holders voting on the gauge, they're going to receive the bribes and also what this is going to do is direct the emissions, the Hermes emissions to that liquidity pool. The LPs, they want those emissions, so they add liquidity to said pool in order to harvest those. This means better trade execution on said pool, more volume in said pool as well. And so the DAO achieves that deep liquidity on their token. So you can see how the circular flow works within this. And do note what you can see on screen is likely going to change quite a bit with the V2 update as this migrates over to Arbitrum, plugs into Arbitrum and gains composability with that ecosystem, which is very interesting indeed. So in due course, as Hermes makes this migration over to the V2, there's three core elements to describe here. 
One, unified liquidity. Two, decentralized liquidity management. And three, from the VE33 solidly model to a more efficient B33 model. So by leveraging layer zero technology under a name they call Ulysses, this architecture is gonna allow for unified liquidity across different chains. So essentially you can have your liquidity on one chain, a home of Arbitrum, and then plug into all of the EVM compatible chains. So as you can see from this kind of structure here, a user could be on any of these different chains, but the pool at the heart connects to the ports on these supported chains and transactions would get routed appropriately via this bridgeless architecture. So I'm pretty sure you've probably already heard of Omnichain, but this will allow for a host of new opportunities. We'll dive into this a little bit deeper in just a moment. V2 of Hermes will also allow for decentralization of liquidity management via Talos. Talos stands for Transparent Automated Liquidity Optimization Strategies, a little bit of a mouthful, so we'll go with Talos. Now we know that Hermes utilizes Uniswap V3 in order to manage liquidity. This is due to the fact it has concentrated liquidity. So under V2 of Uniswap, you would provide liquidity from zero all the way to an infinite price point which made it very capital inefficient. But in Uniswap V3, we have concentrated liquidity. So you can choose the price point within which you add liquidity. However, the issue with this, it's quite complicated to do so. So this is very good for those who are in the market making profession, but for average Joes, it's pretty damn tricky. So what Talos aims to do is actually make this process a whole lot easier and really optimize it for everyone to get involved with. So this will be simplified down to the fact you'll be able to just choose a vault you want to actually get involved with, deposit your tokens in there, and you'll just know that the protocol will be consistently earning for you as it will continually follow the active trading range. We'll dive into this a little bit deeper in just a sec, but if I direct your attention to the blue highlight, an additional feature here is the custom gauges. So what they're actually building is an additional layer on top of UniV3 pools, allowing for custom gauges that can support any form of underlying yield. This will mean you can add the bribes, which we saw on Hermes, directly to UniV3 pools. And this will make the liquidity rental service a lot more efficient as you'll be able to direct more liquidity to a concentrated liquidity environment and give even better trade execution. So as you can see, they're building on top of the shoulders of giants and just making improvements across the whole stack here. And this will have huge benefits for users and also DAOs alike. Then the third point around the V2 upgrade for Hermes is the movement from VE33 to a B33 implementation. So what does this mean? Well, if you have used a solidly fork previously, you'll know that on a weekly basis, you have quite a few maintenance tasks. Claim your distribution, claim the bribes, then do the max lock to increase your vote in power, and then finally cast your votes. So each and every week, quite a few transactions there, a little bit resource intensive and quite annoying if you just want to keep rolling over your votes. So B33 will actually make the lock permanent. It changes from an ERC721 standard over to an ERC4626 standard, the B Hermes token, burned Hermes. It's essentially burned at that point because you're locking in perpetuity. This means no maintenance required and very easy to use for end users. And you can just earn those max optimized rewards in perpetuity. So this is a major saving of time and effort for those involved with the protocol. So let's go a bit deeper on Talos here, the liquidity optimization strategies. So essentially this is a decentralized liquidity position manager for Uniswap V3. So this is gonna make it more simple for users to actually get involved with Uni V3 and actually passively earn off the back of this. So a new product line coming here and something I think a lot of LPs will want to get involved with. Passive users currently are not well rewarded. It's hard to actually make this a profitable endeavor unless you are spending hours each day managing your position. So having this automated is something that's gonna be very juicy indeed. It says both the users and protocols can pull together to make the best of auto rebalancing and Hermes Uni V3 staker. So the Talos strategies will include things like auto rebalancing and also re-ranging around the current price tick. You wanna stay as close as possible to the active price tick in order to receive 
any additional rewards. And obviously, if you can stay close to the active range in a concentrated liquidity environment, it can be very lucrative to be an LP as the fees can be rather generous. Furthermore, as well, though, projects can create optimal positions for their users to provide the liquidity without ever having to worry about incentives not being in range. So with the addition of the gauges on top of the Uni V3 pools, you can incentivize the active tick, so the active price range of your various coin, and you can allocate those rewards just to that area. So around a specific price point, those who have their LP actually active in that range will receive not only the rewards, the fees, but also the bribe emissions on top as well. So a bit of a game changer here for Talos, and this is definitely something a lot of people are gonna wanna get involved with. And as it states, there's two main position types, a vanilla type. So this contract will auto compound fees earned from the underlying position to so quite basic, but the additional staking layer, as we mentioned with the gauge, positions deployed in this contract will not earn fees, but instead will receive emissions. So in my mind, this is highly likely to generate juicy APRs for those who get involved and use this tech. And I think it will become very obvious to those who are not using this once it goes live as to the difference in profit level you can make when using the optimization strategies of Talos. So some of the rebalancing conditions here, just for a bit of food for thought around Talos, you could have rebalancing criteria around the ratio deviation from the 50-50 split, maybe a time interval elapse. So for example, it could rebalance your LP every four hours, or you could use a strategy that actually does this at a specified on-chain event. So next up, we have Ulysses. This is the omni-chain architecture they're gonna be utilizing here by plugging in with layer zero. So this has numerous benefits and potential uses, one of which is allowing projects to come and create cross-chain dApps without actually deploying a single line of code. They can just plug and play with Ulysses. Now, if we think about it, projects need to be active on multiple chains. We're living in a multi-chain world, but we know that bridges aren't that secure and there's too much liquidity fragmentation out there. So the omni-chain approach is going to be the gold standard. And if we think about how global trade is conducted via ports, we have the central port here on Arbitrum and then branches connected to the ports of the other chains, so other EVM compatible chains out here. So what would this mean? Well, think about it. You could incentivize this one pool, the Arbitrum Uniswap V3 pool via Ulysses, manage this, and then you get your liquidity across all of the other EVM environments without having to have fragmented liquidity in individual pools on each a huge efficiency and cost saving. That would of course be from a DAO level. If you're an individual though, and you are providing LP, your LP is being used across all of these different chains. And so you'd be exposed to more volume. More volume equals more fees. And if we just scroll down to this, you can see that a trader obviously can take advantage of this execution environment. They could trade 50 wrapped ETH on say Arbitrum, and receive USDC on the destination chain, say it's optimism. You then take advantage of the opportunity you saw on optimism, happy days. So as you can see, these are Lego blocks that actually all plug in together. If you thought about an LSD, so an ETH staking derivative, say Rocket Pools are ETH, for example, these would be a very good fit with Hermes. What they could do is add a gauge, bribe liquidity to their LP pool, get deep liquidity on said pair. And obviously here with the Omnichain future of Ulysses, you've then got deep liquidity across the Omnichain architecture. And so your our ETH can be utilized across all the EVM chains easily. You therefore don't need to rent liquidity across all these different chains, a huge cost saving. So I think this will become quite apparent once this all goes live. So the Maya team have actually created this very useful calculator to show their Uni V3 incentive system with their bribes versus the current state of affairs with Uniswap V2 and also stable AMMs. So say that this is the liquidity rental cost for a new stable coin. Currently with a stable AMM, you're incentivizing 15K per month in order to receive a set amount of liquidity. However, if you plug in with the V3 incentive tools we've just discussed, utilizing Hermes, you actually get a huge cost efficiency saving of 27X. So instead of paying 15K's worth of incentives to get the output and the liquidity you desire, you only have to contribute $552 by utilizing this suite of features 
features here with MyaDAO. As it says, these two incentives will pay the same amount of rewards to useful liquidity of positions with ranges larger than one tick here. So those are the parameters in here. You can play around with this and see the various outputs you can get here, but the capital efficiency for bribing of these V3 pools is very apparent to see. So with the migration over to Hermes V2 and this change from Matis as a home over to Arbitrum, there's gonna be a whole host of benefits to think about, a lot of which we can't even discuss today due to time constraints, but they have a very neat infographic here on Twitter, Hermes V2 for DAOs. Utilizing these Uni V3 pools, you get the best out of concentrated liquidity, giving great trade execution with minimal resources. Of course, you only need to plug and play with the omnichain architecture of Ulysses to manage one pool to serve all EVM chains. In terms of the LPs then, Obviously, there's benefits of having the Omnichain architecture. You're exposed to a whole host of new fees across all chains. You can use Talos to automate your strategies, making it very simple and more hands-off. Plus, of course, with that staking mechanic, you can stake your positions in a gauge to earn Hermes incentives. For the traders, of course, you open up the capabilities of all the EVM chains to take advantage of opportunities you spot, maybe arbitrage or others. And then for devs, you can get access to this execution environment via the software development kit, plug and play and get your dApp Omnichain. So when, when, when? Hermes V2, the audits are in progress. As you can see, Code Arena, there was a five-week audit that happened and that was quite successful. They're going through additional audits as they migrate to a layer zero. We can see some specified weeks on here, but who really knows? Everything with developing new protocols that are groundbreaking takes a lot of time, but it does seem from my estimations that Q4, a likely time frame to see all these features of V2 to go live and for this to make a real stamp on the DeFi landscape. So I hope you enjoyed this one. You've got a better understanding of what the chads over at Maya Dow have been building out. And this feels like months and months of a long painstaking work is about to come to fruition by the end of the year 2023. So all eyes on this one and we will see you in the next one, guys. Have a good one. Peace.